Welcome back to War of the Ring, where Sauron and his forces are massing horribly. Okay, it is uh, Free People's turn uh, to go. They can pass to the Shadow if they want, because they have fewer dice. But they are going to play uh, a die. So let's zoom down on the Free People's dice and see which action die they're going to use this turn. Okay, and the Free Peoples are going to use one of these dice to actually play uh, an event card. So let's get the event card down here and see which card they're going to play. Okay, so the event card that we're going to play with this die, which of course now is spent, uh, matching the flag symbol of course, army symbol, play on the table. So it's going to be another sort of in-play cards. Advance the Elven Nation one step on the political track. We'll get to that here in a second. While this card is in play, the Shadow player cannot move an army into or attack either in a field of battle or siege, Lorien, Rivendell, or the Grey Havens. Uh, Woodland Realm uh, is not in there though, but okay. It says the Shadow Player can force a power too great to be discarded by using any one action die result and discarding, discarding one army event card and one character event card from his hand. Hmm. All right, so that's going to remain in play. Now let's go move the uh, political track for the elves down one more space towards at war. All right, the elves see what Sauron and his minions are up to. So the elven uh, token here is going to move one space down the political track. They are one away from at war. And because they are active, they could push themselves into at war, which means they could start recruiting troops and moving and attacking and such. Uh, if the free peoples want to do that, their next die action. So up now is uh, the Sauron Shadow Player. All right, the Shadow Player has four dice and they are going to uh, negate a power too great. So how they're going to do that uh, is they're going to be playing one die. If we look at the card power too great, how do you get rid of it? You have to spend as a shadow player one action die, any action die result, which is that one spent. They have to discard one character card, one army card, which they're doing, and that means this is discarded. Nice play. Now it's back to the Free Peoples. All right, it's the Free Peoples turn again. We've got two dice left. I just wanted to put this card back up just as a reminder, uh, which is Threats and Promises in play. Uh, and it says threats and plum when it's in play the free people player cannot advance a passive nation on the political track using muster action die result so we couldn't use this muster to move the elves to at war for instance and also it says um, to discard this card uh, from the table as soon as the free people's nation advances on the political track either due to an attack or due to a companion's special ability hmm all right well just wanted to put that out there uh, so we still know that it's in effect. So we have two action dice and we are going to use the character die this time. And what we're going to use the character die for is we're going to split a group of companions off the fellowship and get them out into Middle Earth. So I'm going to show you how that works here. Uh, so we're spending the character die to do that and I'll show you how to split off some companions from the fellowship. All right, super long shot up here on the board. I am going to split off um, Gandalf, Mary, Pi uh, Mary and Pippin, or sorry, Mary and Pippin <laughs> from the Fellowship. Now, how this works is uh, they each have, of course, leadership ability. Gandalf is three, so they are going to be able to move three spaces plus the hidden movement of the Fellowship right now is at four. So they will be able to move as a group the highest uh, leadership plus the hidden value again which is four so from rivendell the group of gandalf mary and pippin are going to be able to move on the on the map of middle earth up to seven spaces away from rivendell and that's precisely what i want to do so let's get to the map and we're going to have that group split off from the fellowship and in the meantime, what we're also going to do is we're going to grab the Gandalf uh, character, the uh, Pippin and Merry uh, tokens as well, because they are now going to be placed on the board as characters. 
All right, not sure just how excellently this will show up. So the group of uh, Gandalf, Merry, and Pippin can move seven spaces. They're currently here in Rivendell. Now this is of course a uh, black line, so they cannot pass across the mountains, but they can move into the Troll Shaws as the first movement, then into Holland as second, North Dunland. Now you can move through enemy troops, enemy strongholds and everything, no problem. You have to stop at an enemy stronghold though. If they try to move this way, they have to stop here. Like, they can't continue their movement. But we're not going to be going through an enemy stronghold because we're going to be going one to the Troll Shaws, two, or two to Holland, connected, three to North Dunland, four to South Dunland, five to the Gap of Rohan, um, six to the, uh, what is this, Fords of Eisen, and seven takes them right into Helm's Deep. So Gandalf, Merry, and Pippin safely arrive at Helm's Deep. Now they've arrived in the stronghold. So if you arrive in a settlement of a free people's nation, which is this, the, Ro the Rohirrim, uh, they will be activated. <laughs> not, I guess it's fairly complicated. On the bottom of the card here is a symbol. And for Gandalf, actually Merry and Pippin, they all have this little tree symbol here, which means they can activate any nation at all. Uh, and so we will be activating now the Rohirrim. So we're going to go to the political track. And we're going to activate um, the Rohirrim. And this all becomes very important because, remember, with threats and promises out there, we cannot move uh, a nation down the political track unless it's activated. So because Gandalf, Merry, and Pippin show up and warn the Rohirrim of the impending danger, uh, like they couldn't see that from Isengard anyway, they are now activated. So we will be able to move the elves now and the Rohirrim down the track towards at war. So that's awesome. And also the characters themselves... Uh, give re-rolls based on uh, their character level, which uh, if you look here, so for Gandalf it's a one, one re-roll, one re-roll for Merry, one re-roll for Pippin, and they have special abilities as well. So we're going to just take a quick look at their special abilities, because now that they're out on the map, uh, they're no longer able to guide the Fellowship, nor can they ever rejoin the Fellowship again but they do have their abilities uh, as characters out on the board, so let's take a look at that. And again, hope this is focusing pretty good. Uh, once I eventually uh, get enough money together uh, to buy a better camera, then of course the text will, will hopefully be much clearer because I'll be able to shoot in 1080p instead of 720. So Peregrine and Mariadoc are both basically the same. Uh, it says take them alive. If Peregrine is eliminated while in the Fellowship, well, they're, neither of them are in the Fellowship anymore, so actually this text is not going to be of any meaning, really. Uh, immediately place them again. Uh, so anyway, it, it's not going to have an effect. Special ability cannot be used if Fellowship is in Mordor. So basically, Mary and Pippin just break off from the Fellowship, and they have a movement of one if they head out on their own because of the little sword symbol or character level. Uh, and they have one reroll for the little shield symbol. Gandalf's a little bit different story. He has a movement of three, and when uh, groups of companions are moving, so if, if uh, Gandalf grabs Merry and they head off somewhere else, they will be able to move three spaces. Not uh, you take the highest level for movement. Anyway, it all, it all makes sense. I hope <laughs> so. He is a captain of the West. Says if Gandalf is in battle, add one to the combat strength of the Free People's Army, uh, you can still roll a maximum five combat dice. Uh, so you can't... So basically Gandalf's going to add one to the strength. So if there's only three units uh, in play, you'd be rolling four dice because he adds one strength. He's also Emissary from the West. If Gandalf is not in the Fellowship, he can be replaced by Gandalf the White. Instructions are provided on the Gandalf the White character card. So why don't we just take a look at that because that also... Uh, can be important. So Gandalf the White. Now, Gandalf the White would bring a die into play, which is awesome. Uh, three level, one reroll, and a whole bunch of extra stuff that I'm not sure you can read that there, but we'll worry about it if we bring him into play. So how we have to bring him into play, if he's left the Fellowship, we have to use a Will of the West uh, die face. 
And the Will of the West die face is this one right here. Uh, that's what we have to use to bring Gandalf into play. And we have to have at least one other uh, minion of Sauron in play. And Saruman is in play. So we can get out Gandalf the White if we roll a Will of the Wisp die. And no, we cannot use an Elven Ring to change any die face to the Will of the West. Uh, so there is that restriction. We're going to have to roll it. All right, that was a somewhat lengthy explanation of how things are going there. That was the uh, Free People's turn. Back we go now to the Shadow Player. All right, it's back to the Shadow Player, and they are going to play an event die, the Palantir, to play an event card. So let's take a look at the event card they're going to play, and it is Shadows Gather. Well, that doesn't sound good now, does it? Uh, move one Shadow Army up to three regions. The movement must end in a region already occupied by another Shadow Army. That must not be taking. That must not be under siege. Um, the traversed regions must be free for the purposes of army movement, and no shadow units may be picked up or dropped off along the way, other than possibly splitting the army initially, which is what we're going to do. So we're going to go to the map. Uh, shadows are gathering. Uh, the forces of Sauron are on the move. Of course, that card is discarded. So let's go to the map and see where he's going to make that happen. And the Shadow Player is going to get the Southerons moving. So he's going to split this initial army. He's going to take one, two, and three units from here. Move up to three uh, spaces. He's only going to go one, two, and move them in here. Uh, which is now going to make this army have two elites and six regular units right off the doorstep of Pilargir. So that was uh, the Shadow Player's turn. Back we go now to the Free Peoples. We have our final die as the Free Peoples Nation. And we're going to muster one of our activated um, factions. So we can either move down the political track the Elves or the Rohirrim. I think we're going to move the Elves down the track uh, because they got uh, some nasty stuff on their doorstep. So let's go ahead to the political track. We're going to move the elves down one to at war. All right, so our first free people's nation at war is going to be the elves. They have had enough. So what at war means now is we can move uh, elven units uh, across uh, friendly or enemy borders. We can attack units of the enemy and we can especially start recruiting units, which is going to be pretty important. We want to hold on to Lorien, which I think we want to do. All right, back we go now to the Shadow Player. Shadow Player has two dice left. They're going to spend one of it. They're going to spend a character die to move an army with a leader. So let's get to the board and see where they're going to move that army. Well, we were right as the Free Peoples to be worried about the Shadow Player. They're going to move this army from here, which is South Anduin Vale, into Dimrill Dale. So they're going to move all these units that had poured out of Dol Galdor earlier, right on the borders of Lorien. Probably getting ready to attack, as a guess. So now I've got one elite, two, four, six, seven regular units and a Nazgul, which is a leader. Ooh, all right. Well, we only have um, Shadow Player dice left, so let's go to their final die. Uh, and then I think it's going to be an episode, uh, call it an episode for today. And the final die for the Shadow Player is a muster. So they will be uh, taking a muster action. So let's find out where they're going to muster some more armies on the board. All right, it looks like Saruman is building up his forces yet again. Uh, and if we look at the Saruman card, uh, I'm not sure how well that's going to focus. We're going to use the voice of Saruman. And it basically says, uh, when you're using a muster action die, which we are, 
we can recruit on reg a regular Isengard unit in every Isengard settlement, or we can replace two regular Isengard units in Orthanc with two elite units. The Shadow player is opting to just beef up security. They're going to uh, get three regular units. One in Orthanc, one in South Dunland, and one in North Dunland. And that's going to be our episode for today. Uh, so I am going to zoom out. We're going to have a overview of what's going on. Uh, and yeah, so we're getting close to the 20 minute mark, which is kind of where I want to have these episodes sit. Uh, so we'll review what happened and wow, see what's going to be probably happening in the future. Wow, we have a lot of the shadow units built up. We've got 10 units here, 10 units here, 10 units here. We've got uh, 2, 4, 6, 8 units, or 2, 4, 7 units here. we got uh, 8 units up here on the elven border. It looks like Rohan's about ready to get attacked. Minas Tirith should be worried. I mean, the absolute, there's 30 armies here ready to move in and start crushing uh, the men of Gondor. So that's where we're going to leave it off for today. So yeah, boy oh boy, uh, Shadow Army, and we can't uh, move passive nations down the political track. So the dwarves and men of the north are basically locked at the very top section. Uh, the men of Gondor though are only one away from at war, so the second they get attacked they're going to activate and go to at war. So when the Sauron player, Shadow player, decides to attack uh, the men of Gondor, they better uh, send all 30 armies in and crush them quick uh, so they won't have a chance to build up. But I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen? The dice will tell us. So thanks so much for watching along. Thanks for your comments, subscriptions, and likes. Really appreciate it. Join me next time for the continuation of War of the Ring. Yes, we've got Gandalf, Merry, and Pippin now in Helm's Deep. That's all good stuff. Uh, but there's an awful lot of forces there that <laughs> Sauron is building up. But uh, we'll see what happens. So thanks so much, and we'll see you in the next episode.